the scope of federal jurisdiction has played an important role in the balance of power between the executive, legislature, and the judiciary in the wake of 9-11. In the immediate wake of 9-11, Congress enacted a joint resolution called the Authorization for the Use of Military Force, or OMF. This statute authorized the President to use all necessary and appropriate force against the nations, organizations, or persons that he determined had either planned, committed, authorized or aided the terrorist attacks of 9-11, or harbored organizations or persons uh, believed to have participated in those acts. OMP provided a foundation for the president to develop uh, combatant status review tribunals to determine the status of persons captured in Afghanistan and other countries in the wake of 9-11 and questioned regarding their role in the terrorist attacks. In the first case uh, to reach the Supreme Court on this issue, Hamdi versus Rumsfeld in 2004, five members of the Supreme Court recognized that the detention of a United States citizen who had been captured on the battlefield in Afghanistan violated the federal constitution. Hamdi had been, uh, had been held in the United States he was therefore detained in United States jurisdiction and he brought a habeas petition arguing that his indefinite detention without charges violated the Constitution. The court agreed, finding that while some wartime detention powers were essential to the executive, the detention of an American citizen on American soil required a modicum of constitutional due process which included the right to know the charges against him, have the assistance of counsel in uh, responding to those charges, and have some assistance in providing evidence and witnesses to support his defense. The Supreme Court held that the uh, denial of those rudiments of due process had violated Hamdi's constitutional rights. Hamdi's habeas petition was uncontroversial because of his location in the boundaries of the United States territories. The next case pushed the question of federal jurisdiction beyond those territorial boundaries. In Rasul v. Bush in 2004, the Supreme Court faced the question of whether the federal habeas corpus statute, 22 U.S.C. 2241, uh, provided habeas rights to enemy combatants detained at Guantanamo Bay in Cuba. The United States had recently expanded that facility to um, uh, house the substantial number of inmates captured in Afghanistan and other foreign locations, and had done so deliberately because of its belief that uh, detaining the inmates at Guantanamo kept them beyond the boundaries of both the habeas statute and the Constitution. In Rasul, the Supreme Court disagreed, and in a 5-4 decision found that Gitmo detainees were entitled to statutory habeas rights. Uh, however, the court rested its decision in Rasul entirely upon the habeas statute and thus appeared to leave the door open for Congress to amend the statute to limit its extraterritorial scope. Congress was not slow to accept this opportunity. In 2005, Congress enacted the Detainee Treatment Act. The Detainee Treatment Act, built upon the previous executive orders, codified the Combatant Status Review Tribunals as informal military commissions to determine the status and um, uh, legal rights of enemy combatants, and contained a um, sweeping jurisdiction street determining that no uh, Gitmo detainee could file a habeas petition in any federal court, nor did any federal court have jurisdiction to hear such a petition. The lone exception was the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals which was permitted to review the determinations of combatant status review tribunals, but only for procedural correctness. Gitmo detainees, as a result of these procedures, had to await a final ruling from the combatant status review tribunal
and then could only appeal to a federal court to determine if the combatant status review tribunal had in effect followed its own rules. They could not bring sweeping constitutional challenges to the authority of the president to um, establish these uh, proceedings. This Detaining uh, Treatment Act was challenged by uh, a Gitmo detainee named Hamdan in 2006 in the case of Hamdan versus Rumsfeld. Once again, by a 5-4 margin, the Supreme Court ruled for Hamdan and against the administration. However, it did so on somewhat narrow grounds. The court interpreted the Detainee Treatment Act as not applying to cases pending when the statute was enacted, but only to prospective litigation. Uh, the decision was um, thus confined to the effects of the Detainee Treatment Act on cases pending in the system at the time uh, that the act was um, uh, became effective. Congress once again responded swiftly to the Supreme Court's uh, ruling and enacted the Military Combatants Act of 2006. Military Combatants Act provided that uh, the jurisdiction strip of taking habeas jurisdiction away from Gitmo detainees unambiguously applied to pending as well as prospective cases thus making absolutely clear the point that no federal court other than the D.C. Circuit was entitled to hear habeas petitions from uh, Gitmo detainees. This statute raised an important question about the scope of Congress's power to limit the jurisdiction of the federal courts. If we take the exceptions clause language in Article Three, Section 2, uh, to provide Congress with sweeping or plenary power to limit this jurisdiction, then Congress has indeed simply limited the habeas jurisdiction of um, Gitmo inmates. However, if Gitmo inmates cannot be deprived of all meaningful habeas corpus jurisdiction, one could argue that the uh, limited review available in the DC Circuit failed to provide a um, full and fair alternative to habeas sufficient to avoid the effect of the suspension clause in the Constitution, which provides, of course, that Congress may not suspend the privilege of habeas corpus absent cases and proof of invasion or rebellion, which would have been difficult to make. So the threshold inquiry in the Boumediene case was whether or not the Military Combatants Act Section 7, which denied the federal court's jurisdiction to hear habeas petitions from the Gitmo detainees, was valid. This, in turn, turned on the scope of Congress's power to deny Gitmo detainees that statutory habeas jurisdiction and force the court to confront the question of whether there was a constitutional right to habeas applicable in Gitmo that went beyond the scope of Congress's statutory habeas jurisdiction. Supreme Court began its 5-4 opinion in Boumediene by evaluating the history and origins of the writ of habeas corpus. It noted that the guarantee of habeas was one of the foundational privileges dating back from the Magna Carta, uh, protecting individual liberty from abuse of the sovereign, and noted that the mechanism had been utilized beyond the territorial boundaries of England in a variety of cases involving impressed seamen and uh, territorial jurisdictions. The court found these historical precedents persuasive to support a finding that constitutional habeas extended beyond the boundaries of the habeas statute and thus that Gitmo detainees had at least some scope of, uh, some, some portion of habeas rights guaranteed by the Constitution regardless of uh, the habeas statute. The court then went on to address the question of whether or not the procedures provided by the administration through combatant status review tribunals and federal court review by the DC Circuit 
were adequate to protect those constitutional interests. The court found that they were not. Reviewing the procedures uh, available to the enemy aliens detained at Guantanamo, the court noted that they had no access to counsel, uh, had received only the barest summaries of the administration's evidence against them, had very limited abilities to put on evidence to defend themselves or to call witnesses, and significantly bore the burden of proving that they were not enemy combatants. Also, the court found that the D.C. Circuit's very limited procedural review uh, was far from comparable to the constitutional protection of habeas review. However, Boumediene was a limited decision on a variety of counts. Boumediene did not find that the full guarantees of the Constitution or the full guarantees of Article III tribunals are essential to provide justice for combatants held at Gitmo. Instead, it found that the procedures provided for in the Military Combatants Act and the Detainee Treatment Act were constitutionally inadequate, but it recognized that some degree of um, lesser protection would be acceptable, and it left the lower courts to thrash out the scope of those protections. Significantly, the Boumediene Court distinguished two earlier precedents that the administration had relied heavily upon, Johnson versus Eisentrager and Ex parte Kieran. In Johnson versus Eisentrager, a uh, Nazi officer held at, uh, in Germany in the wake of the Second World War had petitioned the United States Supreme Court for habeas after his conviction uh, in Germany. The Supreme Court denied the habeas petition and argued that it was far from clear that the statute permitted them to hear uh, habeas claims from abroad. But it also noted, and the Supreme Court relied on this in distinguishing the case, that the Eisentrager defendants had received a far fuller degree of process in their trials uh, than the enemy combatants held at Gitmo. It also noted that there were critical differences between Landsberg Prison in 1950 and the United States Naval Station in Guantanamo Bay in 2008, and that the United States had, um, practically speaking, absolute and indefinite control uh, in perpetuity of Guantanamo, whereas Landsgraf, Landsberg Prison was an allied um, zone in which the United States did not maintain exclusive or long-standing control. Finally, the court noted that there would have been disruptive consequences to accepting habeas jurisdiction from German prisoners in World War II and recognized that there were far fewer barriers to opening the courts to hear habeas claims from Gitmo detainees. Uh, the second precedent, ex parte Kieran, was also disposed of by the court. In Kieran, eight German saboteurs had come to the United States uh, during the Second World War, intending to carry out acts of sabotage Two of their company had surrendered to authorities shortly after um, arriving in the country, and the FBI had quickly rounded up and uh, detained the remainder. These prisoners were also not provided with Article III uh, tribunals. They were tried before military commissions, uh, found guilty of unlawful belligerence, and sentenced to death. They petitioned the Supreme Court for habeas review of their trials, and the Supreme Court upheld those trials uh, shortly before the execution and published opinions only after the executions had been carried out. In Kieran, the Supreme Court found that because the um, uh, prisoners had traveled to the United States and were not identified as enemy combatants, but were in attempting to spy for and commit sabotage within the United States boundaries, they were unlawful belligerents, not protected by the rights of prisoners of war, nor entitled to 
the status of ordinary lawbreakers uh, in the United States and thus upheld the use of military commissions. However, the Guantanamo detainees uh, did not appear to satisfy the conditions of unlawful enemy belligerents. Some had been captured in their native countries, uh, had no evidence that they had engaged in illegal acts against the United States, uh, consistently denied that they were enemy combatants or had ties to Al-Qaeda, and their own governments had been unable to uh, determine that there was any connection between them and any plots against the United States. Thus, the Supreme Court found that there was far less process available to the Gitmo detainees than had been available to either the Kieran defendants or the Eisentrager defendants, and that the challenges of providing habeas corpus relief uh, were far less in Guantanamo. Finally, the court um, found that habeas corpus rights would not automatically attach to all enemy combatants detained abroad in any location, and found that there might be an appropriate time frame for the government to um, elaborate and apply its own procedural measures to enemy combatants, but it mandated that those procedures be far more extensive than uh, the procedures struck down in the MCA and the DTA. Criticism of Boumediene typically focuses on the fact that while the court rejected the procedures uh, Congress and the executive had agreed upon, it provided no clear framework for what procedures were constitutionally required. It also provided no clear guideline for when the habeas corpus right attached, other than to provide that it did not do so immediately upon capture, and it um, did not elaborate on the scope of the constitutional rights available to the detainees. It simply provided that it would balance the administration's interests in conducting these trials uh, in a way that preserved secret confidential military information with the rights of the detainees to understand and rebut the charges against them. In conclusion, the Boumediene case raises as many questions as it answers. It established that there were boundaries on Congress's power to undermine habeas corpus rights, not only for United States citizens, but also for enemy aliens detained at Guantanamo. It did not resolve the question of whether habeas rights might apply in some place other than Guantanamo, for example, Bagram Air Force Base in Afghanistan, where many uh, combatants in the war on terror currently detained, or any other location. It also did not resolve what Congress would need to provide in the way of alternatives to habeas jurisdiction in order to provide a constitutionally satisfactory substitute. The case thus stands for the proposition that while Congress may make exceptions to the court's jurisdiction, when those exceptions touch upon the great writ of habeas corpus, the court will uh, recognize the force of the suspension clause and require Congress to provide constitutionally adequate procedures to such detainees and not simply um, uh, hold that Congress can limit uh, habeas rights by statute um, below some constitutional floor.